science. The thing we love and respect so much, we only allow scientists to be portrayed by the likes of Arnold Schwarzenegger, Nicolas Cage, and Al Pacino. That <laughs> is how much we respect them and the complexity of the work they do. Science is constantly producing new studies, as you would know if you've ever watched TV. A new study shows how sugar might fuel the growth of cancer. A new study shows late night snacking could damage the part of your brain that creates and stores memories. A new study finds pizza is the most addictive food in America. A new study suggests hugging your dog is bad for your dog. A new study showing that drinking a glass of red wine is just as good as spending an hour at the gym. What? That, that last one? No! 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 one doesn't even sound like science. It's more like something your sassy aunt would wear on a t-shirt. <laughs> Tom.com once even ran the headline, scientists say smelling farts might prevent cancer. It turns out the study never mentioned either of those things. It just pointed out that certain sulfide compounds are useful pharmacological tools to study mitochondrial dysfunction. And while that time story was later heavily corrected, the scientists told us that we still get phone calls and emails from strange radio and TV shows <laughs> wanting us to talk about farts. Which is clearly a waste of their time. There are now so many studies being thrown around, they can seem to contradict one another. In just the last few months, we've seen studies about coffee that claim it may reverse the effects of liver damage, uh, help prevent colon cancer, decrease the risk of uh, endometrial cancer, and increase the risk of miscarriage. Scientists are under constant pressure to publish, with tenure and funding on the line. And to get published, it helps to have results that seem new and striking, because scientists know nobody is publishing a study that says nothing up with acai berries. <laughs> And to get those results, there are all sorts of ways that, consciously or not, you can tweak your study. You could alter how long it lasts, uh, or make your random sample too small to be reliable, or engage in something that scientists call p-hacking. It's very complicated, <laughs> but it basically means collecting lots of variables and then playing with your data until you find something that counts as statistically significant, but is probably meaningless. Uh, for example, the website 538 uh, surveyed 54 people and collected over a thousand variables and through p-hacking the results was able to find statistically significant correlations between eating cabbage and having an innie belly button, <laughs> drinking iced tea and believing Crash didn't deserve to win Best Picture, <laughs> and eating raw tomatoes and Judaism. And if you think I'm exaggerating about the impact that this misreporting can have on our faith in science, Look at an example from some of the people most guilty of it. Because the Today Show, which lives for scientific studies, recently concluded one segment like this. Like a lot of yeah. studies that we love around here, there have been a couple, especially related to women, right. about the benefits as I get all yeah. serious on yeah. whole milk. Okay, true. whole milk, but it's yeah. true. Well, there is a lot of research, though, that says actually mm. having whole milk mm. or having whole fat. Yeah. Dairy products actually can yeah. help you lose weight. I think the, the way to live your life is you find the study that sounds best that to you, you. Yeah. and you go with that. No! No, 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 no! 